All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to create a, a new part to this video series. What I want to do is I want to do some changes on the basically the speed, the upward speed when we reach each one of these points. Basically, I'm going to detect a collision. And when they detect that collision, we're going to apply a force to the sphere. I'm also, as soon as I hit each point, I want to change the, the label and say that this was activated and then activate it and as soon as we leave it we're going to say deactivate it just so that we know how to apply different states so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new scene so this is going to be scene four i'm also going to be regenerating the basically the nap mesh because i don't want it to be part of the previous scene so i'm just going to go, go ahead and go into navigation and we can look at the bake and also do clear and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go ahead and regenerate it now we should have a folder for the new. And then the other thing that I need to do as well is I've been using post-processing. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto the last folder. And let's go ahead and just rename it here. There we go. OK, so, so a couple of things that I'm, that I'm going to need to do. And let me make sure that the mesh get generated correctly. Looks like it did. I'm on the new. And then let me also do something here. I'm going to be adding all these scenes to the build process just in case we need to we need to build it so i'm just going to go ahead and drag them all here there we go all right so so what i need to do is i need to change the implementation of the patrol point or at least add to it because right now there's really there's really nothing there's just a capsule collider so i'm going to go into scripts and we're going to call it we're basically going to call it destination point so i'm just going to call it destination point awesome and then what I'm going to do on the destination point, we're just going to start with one and see how that works before we add it to every single one of the destinations. So I'm going to go to inspector and then drag it and drop it here. And then I'm also going to be exposing a new variable so that we can apply a specific force. So I'm just going to say private and then flow and we can say vector. Well, actually, this is going to be a vector three and then it's just going to be force. And this is going to be the force that we're going to be applying either upward, depending on where we want to do. We could do X, we could do Z. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Y, but I want to make it like a vector so that it's more flexible. And then I'm also going to make it serializable fill. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to add on collision. So what I'm going to do is as soon as we hit the collision enter, we're going to do basically add the force. And then what I'm going to do on the collision exit I also want to not add a force, but in this case, I'm going to be changing the label. So if we go back to Unity and we look at this component, we need to basically add a reference to each one of these components. So if I go, I normally, I always forget what this is called because I know it's Te Text Mesh Pro, but they have, it's actually, oh, it's actually, yeah, Te Text Mesh Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a reference to that. It's going to be of that type. And then this is just going to be the overlay. And then I'm going to add it as a serializable field as well. And let me go ahead and associate it. Actually add namespace and we can remove the things that we don't need. So right now I know that the original text is going to be, you know, what we have right now, which is, let's, let's see, which is patrol point. But it doesn't say, you know, it doesn't say anything. So I think what I can do is as soon as I hit it, I can change it to say activate it. And then as soon as I leave, we can just leave it as activated. I think that's OK. And let me go ahead and go here. And I'm going to say if other. I guess right now, other is going to be the player. And I haven't really created anything that de describes that we're dealing with the player. So let me make sure. I could use tags. I think the name is fine for now. Let's just go ahead and say if the other one is going to be a game object and the name equal equal player, then we're going to do, we're basically going to get the overlay. And then I'm just going to say text, and this is going to be activated. I like to use capital letters on labels, so I'm just going to do activate it. And thinking about this, let's go ahead and do deactivate it on the deactivate it on the exit. And that's good. And then the other thing that I want to do that I that I wanted to apply to this is what's going to be a force. So I want to apply a force. But I can't really apply a force unless the player has a rigid body. And that's what we need to do. We need to add a rigid body to this. Let's go ahead and add a rigid body. And I haven't really tested this, so I don't know 
how this is going to behave by having the net mesh. In fact, I'm going to test this before we before we do anything. So let me okay, so we have the force, we have this, and then so for now I'm just going to let's go ahead and comment this out and then we can test the that the the actual rigid body is not gonna break anything. So I'm just gonna comment this out. Let's close out of this, go back into Unity. And now that we have a rigid body associated with the player, let's see how how the player moves across the, the, the points. You kind of see how it looks a little bit different because now we have we have a gravity that we're that we're actually applying. So let me go ahead and look at the player because the player is having a hard time moving moving around and I think it's because it's colliding with this component. So what I'm gonna do here is I I don't want to maybe I'll just make it let's go ahead and make him a little bit small bit smaller of what they, they currently are so that the player or what we can do instead we can just let's go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that we have much more space. And then I'm gonna move them all down a little bit because they're I don't want the player to collide as much. And maybe something like that works better. There we go. Let's see how the player moves across the maze. And you can see that it goes around, went around here, and then it looks like we're colliding, we're colliding, we're colliding. And it's going around. And there we go. Let me go ahead and look at the let me look at the player and some of the parameters that I have that I have on the actual patrol agent. And see, let's go ahead and the minimum remaining distance is gonna be, I'm gonna increment it to see what kind of changes that gives us. And it's colliding, okay. So I think that I think the distance needs to be maybe let's do 2.5. And let's try this one more time. Okay, and we are going around, going around, and it's going around. Just want to make sure everything works before. Okay, so it looks like everything is working. So let's go back into into our code here and go into uncommon this and then the other thing that I want to do is I want to apply a force right so I need to get the the player rigid body so I'm just gonna say okay so the other which is the one that we're colliding I want to get that object rigid body so I'm just gonna say get component rigid body and then I can just say add force and just say add force here and I'm gonna grab the force that we have right now and then I'm going to multiply that by vector, we can just say vector 3 up. And we can tell it what kind of force mode we want. So I'm just going to say force mode. And this one is just going to be force. And let's see, so I think this is complaining. Let's go ahead and make this a flow. Actually, I think that's going to, that's going to work better because we're going to be multiplying it by a force. And then maybe by default we set this to, and I'm not, I'm completely guessing on the number, what we need to do here. And I think that I think that's everything that we need to do. We're gonna be activating and then deactivating. That's fine. Or I think better yet, what we can do is we can save the value of the label. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and say a string original text. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say, okay, I want to, as soon as I collide, I want to save the, the value of the text so that I can restore it, you know, right after. And instead of saying deactivate it, because I think that's going to I think that's going to be better. So it's activated as soon as we're on it and we're colliding, we're gonna save the original value and then we're gonna restore the value back to what it was. Okay, so let's see if, if this works. So I need to also associate the overlay with each one of these components. So I'm just gonna go here. And I didn't add the the script to all of these ones. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that really quick here. Three, four, and then five. And the same thing here. I'm gonna select patrol three, patrol four, and then lastly patrol five. And add the overlay. And now let's go ahead and hit play and see if everything is working. So activate it and activate it we're going to patrol point activate it and then activate it and it looks like we never hit the we never got the the label to to get restored and let me see let me see if this is actually executing here so i got the overlay and then original text which is oh i see so this is in the run order it needs to be this way 
because I need to save it before I change it. So let's go back in here and hit play. And let's see what happens. So patrol, and then you can see how we restore it, activate it, and then we'll restore it, activate it, and then we'll restore it. Same thing here. We'll look at the last one, and then I think I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it good. All right, guys, so I make a few changes so that we can make the sphere actually jump. And it's not perfect, but I think it gives me an idea what it requires. So I'm just gonna play it and show you the results. So just got a little bit of a jump there. And the the problem with this implementation though is the, the patrolling doesn't really go in order. Like it all depends like if I, because I'm disabling the agent as I'm doing the jump. That way I can use gravity and see how it jumps. And then now it's trying to figure out where it left off. Now it thinks it's two and it basically goes in and it goes to five but we'll watch it a little bit more here and then look at there you go and now it's going to four it jumps jumps again and, and then it just basically is trying to do the best it can with the information that it has so let me show you some of the code so that you understand what i what i did so i have a flow that basically determines the force the overlay that i show you I do, I'm blocking collisions for an amount of seconds and the reason for that is because I'm disabling the agent because when you start to mix physics with agents things can get really, you know, really uh, not working pretty much and that's what I'm doing here, okay, so if I if I hit the max I'm basically and the, and the agent is, is set, I am setting the agent to true, I'm resetting the commission, the, the collision timer, I'm also setting the agent to null Otherwise, I'm basically incrementing the, the timer. And then what I'm doing is on collision enter, I am getting a reference to an half mesh agent. I am disabling the agent because I need to apply forces, otherwise we wouldn't see anything. So for this amount of time, which is going to be 1.5 seconds, I'm blocking the agent, I'm applying forces, and then right after we hit the max in the timer, we basically re-enable the agent and then so some of these things we need to we probably need to test but i'm applying a upward force and i'm also applying a forward folks a force depending on the on the actual sphere direction and then on collision and exit i am setting the block commission block, i keep saying commissions the block collision timer say back to zero